I just started wondering what is in the mind of an artist or what happens in the heart of an artist so that when they do art they are more prone to be depressed or to have mental health problems and at the same time you wonder well is it worth it being an artist because we tend to worship them and to worship their profession and it's true it's something to worship I think but well, but it's tough for them because they are at, at a great risk and sick it up I can curl before you infer my love all the pain that you endured and all my life I'm indoors watching breakfast club and eating cereal everything that we chase is material everything that we know is just theory and floating the weary is tight of hysteria mental health issues are an epidemic in the UK as an increasing number of people require access to mental health services with one in four people facing mental health issues in their lifetime meticulous living who's living this way wither away quiver and shame dying to trick me away Art has often been understood as a personalized form of expression, a depiction of the artist's inner workings and experiences. Yet art as providing a legitimate form of therapy for those suffering from mental health issues is a new and growing concept. For the past five years I've been working with children, both individually and in groups. I use elements of art therapy in my work with kids, which I also try to transfer in my work with refugees. Art has proven to be extremely helpful because art is very playful and art makes you get out of your comfort zone without even being aware of it that process it's beautiful to watch it's beautiful to be a part of it you take the art form and you work with the creator of the art and you come to we can call it a conclusion things get revealed that neither the creator of the art or me the inducer of the artwork was able to conceive in the beginning Arts therapy provides patients with catharsis, through self-help, with the underlying emphasis on self-exploration. It has been proven to alleviate anxiety, depression and stress, while increasing resilience and well-being. And there has been a push by charities and parliamentary groups to implement this cost-effective and useful form of therapy more widely. One would assume then that art as a career path would be a great vocation for those wishing to pursue it, allowing the artist to commit oneself fully to self-exploration and strengthening of mental health whilst earning a living. Ironically, however, research supports a disproportionately high rate of mental health issues in the arts. A 2015 report by Victoria University, for example, found that performing arts workers experience symptoms of anxiety 10 times higher than the general population and depression symptoms five times higher than the general population. I'm not surprised at the statistics. People who mix art, they have a deeper understanding of reality. It's normal when we have a deep understanding of reality to suffer more than the others. It's the same for the philosophy. Nietzsche said that uh, the more you look into the darkness, the more the darkness look into you. I see an artist near to philosopher in the way that they are seeking for a deeper meaning in life. As a poet, I do feel like I have to really get into my emotions. I almost have to be the character that I'm writing about or the person that I want to illustrate. It means I have to go in in myself. There's been different times in my life where I have gone to that level where I feel like I can't get out of it. Once you reach the bottom, it's really difficult to come out unless you have the tools to deal with that. Francis Bacon once said, the artist must go deep in the mystery. That's really obscure and I really like that. The parts that you don't know about yourself. You have to deal with everything. What I think is that artists feel a bigger melancholy because they intend to kind of emotionalize the landscape. Artists are more likely to be sensitive, so they are more likely to feel sadness and emptiness towards the world. I've had depression before in the past. I had what I call a quarter life crisis and during my quarter life crisis I had a severe depression, anxiety for a long time. I suppressed my feelings by me suppressing my feelings that stopped me from showcasing my authentic self. So the analogy that I have is my feelings, what I used to do is hold them down and suppress them. If my negative feelings was on a tap, the tap was open, there was a hose and my finger was holding it and there was a point where I couldn't hold it any longer and it just all... Bleh. 
I was crying at times where I couldn't control myself and I guess as artists the idea of depression can be used as an energy to create work but at the same time is the realization that great work doesn't have to come from depression because there's this expectation to go I need to go into a dark place for me to create great work. They think uh, you can uh, avoid depression with a good work-life balance as everyone else. An artist's brain works 24 hours a day you're always constantly thinking and developing ideas and trying to create things so if you take time out it means you give your brain some time to refresh and look at life in a different way and then come back to your art. You can't go deep without going down. You don't necessarily have to fall into borderline depression. Where you need to be is innovative. You have to go through skepticism. It means that you never stop questioning yourself, questioning your ideas. You're always trying to seek something. Yeah, you are in a research. A very important thing is probably a purpose. Of course, an artist, a good artist is someone that has a lot of sensibility, but I don't think it's the only thing that matters. It's a struggle. If you are not necessarily searching that higher purpose, it's very difficult to live with this high sensibility because you are, of course, aware of so much ugliness in our world. It's not very unusual to feel depressed about what you find and not being able to work with that. I don't think artists are that concerned with dealing what's inside of them. They do put it in an art form, but they get detached from it. And they don't do what us therapists do. They don't take the art form and then place it back here and here. They don't make conclusions. They don't have a person who helps them make a picture out of the whole process. It shuts you down in a way because you have to shut yourself down and exclude from other sensory impulses, but then you have to open up. Maybe they don't have the tools to make art into therapy. They don't hear me, they don't listen so, and they can't see me, I'm invisible. I'm a living, I'm a hero, oh Watch and purchase as the world revolves My precious oppressing pulling me up So as an artist you have to deal with everything that goes on in your mind But on top of that, there's pressure from the outside Slow my mission, obsession, escape beyond that On one hand you have an 18, 19, 20 year old vision An idea of like, okay this is what an artist is And it's most of the time an idealistic vision So yeah, when you come in the real world, it's art There's a small market and the market usually goes to just a few artists So it, it becomes hard to make a living out of it And then after several years, your mental state can suffer But if you're an artist and you want to get this fame And you're not working your ass off, it's not going to work like what do you say to your friends like yeah I'm trying for two years but it's not working there's a lot of shame I guess that is unspoken some people find their way out of that and some people don't the competition is too much on them I think mentorship is the right approach if they have mentors and they have coaches then they could put some goals that can be easily achieved with their mentors without that alone they could suffer from depression as an artist it gets worse because we, we tend to push yeah. ourselves so hard to create and then the benefit of that is most time exposure it's quite difficult to actually get some financial gain in the art sometimes in terms of really sustaining yourself. Most artists can't even dream of having a mortgage. Although you love your arts and you love to fight against this structure of having a nine to five job, it's still very difficult to sustain that art and feel comfortable. Stuck on these roads, it's lonely, sleeping rough just creeped upon me. How could this be my story? Mama raised me decent, surely. After all that, it makes us wonder, with whom does the responsibility lie to combat this problem of mental health within the arts community? Is it a matter of the individual? Is it an issue which needs to be addressed by our government? Or is the industry lacking the right structure? Or is it a matter of ignorance from society? The general public doesn't really care. They just see a piece of art and usually it takes a while for the public to understand what that art means. When I was maybe in the primary school, in the high school, I was thinking about art, like paintings, architecture, sculpture and so on. And now I think art is much, much more than this. Even just like schooling, there's more academic courses. For me it was, and there was artistic courses. The society as a whole isn't concerned with emotions. I can speak for Croatia, if you go to an average school, nobody is uh, interested in social and emotional development. Especially this aspect of school has been disregarded. Pedagogues and psychologists agree. That's not just my opinion, it's their professional opinion that their input has been disregarded. The society isn't telling you that how you feel is important, that how you relate to other people is important. 
I've seen a lot of artists go into depression from education. It's basically because the perception we have of ourselves as artists is so low in the sense that we don't see our art being bigger than just the exhibition or the recognition. You have a voice that in a sense is a transferable skill that can be used in different contexts in the sense that you're speaking to the parliament about an issue. You've just spent months and months researching this piece of work so you should be able to take that transferable skill onto a different platform to carry on discussing. There's avenues of of the future artist becoming more sustainable and with sustainability comes better mental well-being you know it's a responsibility of everyone but particularly it's a problem of the individual if he has a mental problem he or she needs to find a doctor no one can do that for you of course it involves governments because the units of mental health at public hospitals must be good otherwise this doesn't work there has to be structures in place for the artists to be able to become conscious of their mental well-being we're all uh, in charge of our own life and when we give that responsibility away to the government or to the institution or anybody else really then we're giving away the power that we have upon ourselves. Why should we give that control away? The journey of growth isn't easy. Our superpower is for us to be ourselves. Society doesn't care. The schools are focused on the wrong things. But the biggest problem is the artist itself. A wrong mindset will do more damage to one than the exterior forces we face from the outside. The question is, how do we change this? Sentado à janela, vejo gados a passar. Well, we can change that by first of all having more forums on arts, more shows on arts, more documentaries on into the lives of artists. Because we need to get out of our comfort zone as an artist. The community of artists should uh, stand up for this and they should uh, work together for organizing programs that artists are not alone. Probably the most helpful is the artists helping other artists. Chego de olhos fechados apalpando aqui e ali so in terms of battling mental health, Elevating Minds actually does a lot to use artistic mediums as ways to confront these issues and act as an art therapy and a release to aid young people who are young in their craft in adjusting and overcoming these issues. It essentially acts as art therapy for artists. The Young Minds Matter project brings together artists from across the world. Um, we have participants in Portugal, Belgium, the UK, Nigeria, Poland, literally anywhere you can think of. At the event, artists showcase their work, music, dance, illustration, photography. It's really important to share our ideas with others, so you're relating your things to others and there's more compassion and you feel more warm. When you're working on a project or you're doing something, it's usually an isolated thing, so you're always by yourself. So maybe creating spaces where people can just go and work with other artists and feel like there's a brotherhood or sisterhood, it really helps with your mental health. And the vibe created at this festival really helps to lift people's spirits and the relationships that you can generate through this creates a real strong bond between participants and helps them to work through their struggles together. This is a step towards the right direction. <laughs> Noto que o sol já vai alto E eu ainda estou sentado à janela Corre tudo lentamente Como a cera que escorre de uma vela E eu acordo em sobressalto Noto que o sol já vai alto Eu ainda estou sentado à janela